For time long ago, stories were meant to be everything. They represented the mundane, the extraordinary, and in most cases, outworldly. But what fascinated humanity the most were tales of beings far above their stature and strength. Gods, they were called, and their tales would help to shape the lives of those who would be fortunate enough to hear them. This video series will cover such tales and myths that spring from an old culture full of giants, dwarves and heaven-splitting gods. These myths come from old Norse sagas where gods were not merely omnipotent beings far from the understanding of humanity, but had mortal souls and feelings that were an extension of what we ourselves were and still are. So join me now as we explore the wisdom of Odin, the might of Thor and the cunning of Loki where heavens would tremble and Ragnarok will eventually be nigh. We start this tale at the beginning, at the very beginning of all things where all that existed was a void, utter emptiness where neither soil nor sea nor sand nor time had any meaning, the void of nothingness, emptiness called Ginun Gagap, for it had no beginning or end. The void of voids was encased on the north by a dark, ice-ridden place of frost and fog called Niflheim. This land of frost was home to vast rivers that flowed from the beginning, but apart from this flow, the land was barren. So at the southern end of Kinungagap existed another world, opposed to Niflheim in every way, for it was made of fire and fire alone. The only thing that moved there was lava and smoke and nothing else. But then, this empty void of Ginungagap, surrounded by ice and fire on both ends, witnessed the first creation at the very core of this void. Ice from the frozen north and fire from the smouldering south would meet where the permafrost would finally melt and drip at the very core of Ginungagap. This then began to take shape of a being almost like a human, but much larger. In fact, it was the largest being to have ever lived and he was called Ymir the Giant or Jotun. Upon his fated birth, Ymir wandered the emptiness, aimless and thoughtless, but above all with deep hunger, with nothing to feed on until he discovered a giant cow called Adumla whose milk he drank to satiate his hunger. The giant would drink milk and sleep, and during one of his sleeps, he gave rise to two beings. Giants of course they were, and male and female who would start the first family in this new strange world. Adumla the cow had nothing to feed on and instead would lick the salty ice from the roof of the world. This block of ice she fed on began to melt, and gave rise to a fair being who like giants before him was tall but much more handsome for after all he was the first god and his name was Buri. Buri married the daughter of a giant and her name was Bestla and he had three sons with her. The eldest would be Udin followed by Vili and Ve. Udin the eldest and his two brothers realized that the giants were bothersome and were growing rapidly in number. But they knew they couldn't just attack Ymir head on, for he was the primordial giant, the strongest of all beings. So they devised a plan to slay him as he was sleeping, but Ymir the Gargantuan would realize the ambush and fight back, and so ensued a great and horrific battle that lasted forever. In the end, by using all their strength, the gods or Aesir as they called themselves slew the mighty giant. So large was this giant that the blood that spewed from his dead corpse would drown the world in its entirety and kill all his children. All except the giant Bergelmir and his wife who fled and hid in the land of mist. And so the triumphant Aesir decided to build a new world from the remains of the once great giant Ymir. The blood that flowed from the giant's body became the oceans, lakes and rivers. His flesh became the land and his bone made up all the mountains. His teeth would become rocks and his hair would become trees, grass and all the foliage. 
his brow and even his eyelashes became our world in which Norse myth is known as Midgard. What remained of the giant was his skull which formed the sky and the Aesir took the sparks from Muspelheim to create the first stars and so was the world of Norse sagas created. The Aesir knew they had much work to do for the world was still without purpose and most of all without any beings. In the next video, we will look at the aftermath of the first creation and the making of a new home for the Aesir, the legendary abode called Asgard. Until then, farewell.